Hello everybody, welcome to your pick a card reading. This is for all of you light workers out there and this is messages from the light. This is messages that spirit wants you to hear right now on your journey, on your chosen path forward and see what beautiful energies are surrounding you or what spirit really wants to highlight you um, for you and make you aware of right now. So we're going to do three cards and we're going to do the pick a card reading for you you um, take a moment if you haven't done pick a card reading before um, once I lay the cards out just take a moment close your eyes take a deep breath connect with your intuition and see which one that you are drawn to the most if you find yourself that you're drawn to more than one card um, more than one message feel free to watch more than one or even all of them and um, because there'll probably be something in there um, something in there from you know multiple messages for you okay if you can't make a decision or if you're a little bit unsure okay so we've got our three cards laid out so we've got card number one over here card number two in the middle and then card number three right there for you guys okay so take that moment take a deep breath okay connect with your cards connect with your higher self and we're going to move right into message number one and hello there to all of you who chose message number one. Let's have a look and see what messages that spirit has for you. We have grounding. All right. It is very important along your journey, along your spiritual practice to ground and protect your energy. We do this so that we don't get kind of lost a little bit too much in the spirit world so that we maintain our connection with the earth and with our roots. When we get the grounding energy here, this also is spirit saying that, yes, you are a being of the light and you long for that freedom, that open energy of the spiritual realm of the all of the wondrous white light that the universe has to offer. OK, you but you also want the healing power, the joy, OK, and things to manifest and blossom into your physical world as well. It's like I want the connection between both all right and when we ground ourselves when we connect with eight with nature okay or when we plant roots and plant our feet on the ground this is giving us that extra power to take all of the energy the magic on, of the universe and to manifest it into our 3d world okay we're connected with both worlds simultaneously okay your dreams Okay, your dreams are coming to fruition and grounding your energy helps bring your dreams to life in this world. Okay, so you can harness all of the wonderful power and the blessings and the light that goes through you into your 3D. So it's a beautiful, beautiful energy. All right. This is also, like I said originally, that this is a reminder from spirit, okay, to um, ground and protect your energy, especially when engaging in any kind of spiritual practice at all. Okay. It's very important for us to maintain that healthy balance and equilibrium between the spiritual realm and also our 3D world. Okay. So just an important message there. For some of you as well, the grounding energy, when we ground ourselves, and when we really connect with earth and with nature, um, it can be very calming and it can be very healing for us as well. All right. So, you know, or, you know, you could also be examining where you put down your roots. And, you know, for some of you, you may feel as though as you've gone through your journey through life that you haven't always felt like you belong. And spirit saying for some of you here that you are about to find where you belong. And even though you may come from the spiritual realm and you're very connected in that way, okay, there's something here that a little bit more aligns with your reality. So if you've been thinking of making some bold moves, if you've been thinking of picking up your roots and moving somewhere that's a little bit more in alignment with who you are. This could be finding different communities to be involved with. This can be moving to a different place of residence. This could be moving in your job. This could be moving um, 
your cities where you live. Okay, there may just be some avenue that is opening up for you and you will find that place where you feel as though you belong, where you feel as though you're connected in a way that maybe you have never felt quite that connected before. So a lot of very wonderful energy is there for you guys. Let's pull some more cards and see what other messages that spirit has for you. And we have the Thoth Light Codes. Ooh, that is a powerful one. Okay, be ready to receive some very powerful messages. You are so very connected for some of you. You have been here through millennia. You have been here through so many lifetimes and you have so much profound wisdom that is in your soul. Okay, just like a tree that grounds itself, that plants roots and that grows and blossoms through many centuries, you have also been that light being, that light worker. You have gained a lot of wisdom and insight over those years, okay? And wow, you are not just are you um, an inspiration and a light worker and a leader for other people. You have a lot of magic that lies within you. You have a lot of magic that flows through you and to you. The Thoth Light Codes shows that there is something coming to you that gives you some answers, some solutions. You are about to have one hell of a spiritual download. Okay, so when we're when we have this light code that's coming in, when we have this message that's coming in, this um, awakening, it is very important to ground ourselves in this here and the now in the three D. Okay, um, because I think here that there is something coming in for you that is shifting your spiritual self in a way that you will never be quite the same again. Okay, you might be unlocking the doors to your Akashic Records. You might be unlocking the doors to some magical divine gifts that you have. This is a, a time of power, of strength and enlightenment for you. A massive awakening coming in here. Thoth is that great spiritual teacher giving you deeper and higher levels of understanding, expanding your consciousness and raising your vibration. Thoth is very closely related to Egypt and also Atlantis. Okay. Some of you might be drawn to Egyptian teachings or readings, or maybe you're just have this little fascination with Egypt or maybe even the mystical magical world of Atlantis. Okay, whatever that is for you, if you're drawn in a certain way, keep on following the path that you're drawn to. Okay, don't resist that energy, okay, because there's some sort of messages or teachings that are opening up for you guys, all right? Very powerful time, very powerful time. So let's see what other messages are coming out for you. Thank you. Destiny. You are on the right track. You are on the right path. Nope, thank you. You are headed in the right direction. There's something here that is unlocking for you, that is shifting for you, that it's part of your destiny, part of your journey, okay? And embrace that. I think some of you, thank you, I think some of you are also um, figuring out your soul's path. You're figuring out why am I here, Okay, this is being shown to you in a very powerful, very profound way. Okay, revelation, that clarity. Expect to have a massive shift. Okay, connect with yourself, your higher self. Be open and ready to receive. All right, we have the body coming in the left hip. Now, our hips um, as part of our body is what propels us forward. You are walking the path that you're meant to walk along. You might be afraid. You might be unsure. You might feel as though you're lost in some way, okay? You may have had some divine detours in your world, but you are moving forward. The left side of your body, if you're um, 
If you're right-handed, the left side of your body tends to be like the non-dominant side. If you, and so that is your kind of receiving side, right? That is the gentler side. Okay, so there might be something here. There might be something to do with the left side of your body that gets activated when these light coats are activated for you. Okay, so just pay attention to the left side. Let go of any kind of fear or resistance, okay? There might be something here where it's a little bit scary or you're a little bit uncertain about what lies ahead, about what path you are following, okay? When we surrender and we let go of resistance, this is when we are more in the flow. This is when we get a deeper insights, understanding, we shift our perspective, okay? We see things a little bit differently, okay? So there might be something here that you are resisting or some resistance in your world, okay? And you are about to take that step back and let go of that. That's where you can be much more in the flow. We have the heart coming in. Isn't that beautiful? Open your heart and get ready to receive. This is a time of healing, of growth, but also being shown your path, a very magical time for you. Okay, so you're being shown the way, you're being shown the light, all right? Something is activated in your heart space here, all right? And, you know, not just some healing and not just feeling connected, okay, but something joyous and something wonderful there for you, a little bit mystical and magical. And, oh, joy, <laughs> there you go, okay? Leading you on your path to happiness, to joy, to feeling like you belong, to feeling like you're connected, to feeling like you understand who you are, what you're meant to be, okay? Or you could just have that eureka moment and that's putting a smile on your face. So that a light code activation is activating some joy and some power and some wonderful energy in your world. So let's pull some more cards for you guys. And since we have our friendly Thoth coming out there, I'm going to pull, thank you, I'm going to pull the Thoth deck out for you guys, all right? So let's see what other messages are coming in for you. Very odd, actually. I haven't had this deck out for a while, and I got the inclination to pull it out this morning, and this is probably why. So let's get messages for people watching, please. We have the Ten of Pentacles bringing wealth. We have... The Temperance card bringing the arts and alchemy to you. You've got strength coming in here. And we also have the Fool. Get ready here, people. There is an abundance of information, wealth, knowledge um, coming towards you, okay? We do have the Ten of Pentacles. Abundance is blossoming into your life. Prosperity, okay? All of these things. The power is yours to achieve your goal and your dreams, okay? The, um, the Ten of Pentacles can really show, number one, your ability to achieve greatness, and to realize that success in your world, in your physical world, in the here, in the now. And when we have art coming out, okay, this is um, out of this deck, okay, formerly called the Temperance card, and this is art, this is the highest level of alchemy, okay? This is bringing things together, your ability to change, to transform, there's powerful transformation and change happening within you okay this is certainly bringing you in some spiritual power okay to create to make things better to heal to let go you name it okay this is a time of personal strength and power for you coming into your life to create something that you want that you desire okay you're bringing things together things are coming together for you in a very powerful very profound and very spiritual way and you have the power within. Your power is coming to light for you. The nine of uh, the nine of wands gives us the strength, the power, the courage to persevere, to overcome challenges. Okay, this is a time of profound power and strength for you. Okay, I think the messages, I think the the activation that is going on um, within you and coming towards you is 
man oh man um for one i think there's some sort of revelation or epiphany or clarity or something that it's going to like blow your mind, like blow your socks off a little bit. I think you're being reminded here of exactly how powerful you are to create the wealth, the prosperity, the abundance, the success in your world that you are looking for. Your sense of achievement and accomplishment, putting down roots of feeling confident and powerful and strong. There's just something that is activating within you. If there had been doubt, there will now become confidence. Where there's been fear, there is now joy. Where there has been inaction, there's now action. The power of creating the life that you want is coming to your realization very quickly. And this sets the stage for, stage for a new journey. The Fool, new adventures, new journey, new doors opening for you, a new you. Embrace it, roll with it, enjoy this time. Enjoy the moment, enjoy where you're at and enjoy where you're headed. The Fool can represent your ideas coming in, manifesting into your reality, and boom, you taking action, trusting in your journey and moving forward in a very exciting way. All right, for some of you, this is a dawn of a brand new day for you. This is you realizing your full potential. Or there's something you're being shown the way and given the power to change. Change your circumstances, change where you are, change your reality, change where you're headed. So trust in your journey because wherever you happen to be, you are exactly where you're meant to be. The Three of Cups. Celebrate every moment. Celebrate your success. Celebrate your, your journey forward, okay? Find a group of people that can celebrate with you. This is a time of love and support and of joy and harmony in your world. The Three of Cups brings in the sigh of relief, the sense of, oh my goodness, I'm on the right path and I'm looking forward with such wonderful positive vibes. But the Three of Cups is very social energy as well. And we did have the message earlier with the grounding energy that if you feel as though there's somewhere where you don't quite connect to somewhere where you don't quite belong, you may feel like that lone wolf. The three of cups shows that not only do you have a spiritual soul tribe that is always around you, supporting you, guiding you, loving you, protecting you. Okay. But you may also be making new connections, finding where you fit, finding where you belong. So this is a time I feel for some of you where you are breaking free and coming out of your shell and you're discovering where you're meant to be, where you're meant to plant roots and those like-minded souls and individuals that can connect with you on a deeper level than anyone else previously in your world. The nine of wands coming out here for a second time. And you see this figure in this nine of wands, how big and tall and powerful and strong he is. And the army that is trying to attack him down below and he's not letting anything affect him anymore. There may be some battle wounds, some battle scars, okay? But whatever you have overcome, whatever you have powered through is making you the person that you are today. Strong, powerful, confident, in anything that you do. There's a fire that's being lit within you here. King of Wands. Strength. Power. Passion. Perseverance. Rewards. You are stepping into the light and you are stepping into your true sense of self. The Kings represent success. Authority. A deep knowing that you can accomplish whatever it is that you set out to accomplish. 
So tap into that inner strength that you have to follow your goals and your dreams. To come out of the shadows and into the light. I feel that some of you have been keeping your spiritual gifts hidden. A secret. And this has caused a little bit of turmoil within you. And I think Spirit's encouraging you to let people see the true you. To let people see you for who you really are and to let your beautiful light shine. We have Osiris coming in here, father, husband, brother, son, the divine masculine, the masculine energy of action, of authority, of motivation. The yang energy is flowing through you. I also feel here that there is somebody, number one, the masculine energy is very strong in your reading. Okay, so you may just have this energy where, number one, it speaks to your inner strengths, whether you're male or female, it doesn't matter. But I also do feel here that you are very connected with the divine masculine at this time. And you are a pool of untapped resources. Okay, that you've got just this fire in your soul and your belly and that no matter what life throws at you, you will never let it keep you down. You may have fallen, but you're never defeated. And this strong energy is flowing to you. You may actually have a spirit guide that is a very strong masculine energy. You may even have somebody looking over you a past loved one from this lifetime or previous last time in lifetimes, your ancestors. And it's a very masculine energy that is guiding you and protecting you and leading you forward. And of course, we do have Toth bringing you in that very masculine, very powerful leadership kind of energy. There certainly is a leadership kind of energy that is coming out of your reading. And I think you are being very guided and protected by those masculine energies, both spiritually, but also maybe in the physical world here as well, considering we do have the King of Wands. Um, there may be a male figure in your life that may you may connect with on a different level. They may actually have their own spiritual secrets, um, or they may actually there may actually be a little bit of a revelation here for. Um, for someone out there, probably not all of you, I wouldn't think. Okay. But there may be like some sort of family secret that may come to light. And when you do let your light shine, or when you do let people know about some spiritual gifts that you have really tapped into, there may be something, it might be open a door for you to learn something about some family history, something that has previously been hidden from you. And this could come from your, um, father's side or your grandfather's side of your family. Okay, the masculine dominant, uh, the masculine family tree there somewhere along the way. Okay, it, there could be someone in your family that was like an old sage, someone who's very wise or someone who's very spiritual somewhere there. And you just made it may have just been someone something that nobody really talked about. Or maybe it was like forgotten somewhere there. Okay, so certainly something here with male figures in your world, in your life. So there could be um, a, a male coming in or a masculine energy coming in. This could be a new people coming into your life. Okay, but this can also be reconnecting with people as well in your world. Sometimes people act as accidental oracles as well. So sometimes people say things that are very profound and very deep, but they don't know they're saying it, okay? Because spirit is talking through them to deliver a message to you. So I'm going to leave that there for you folks. I hope there was something here that resonated or clicked for you on some level. Um, if there was, please consider hitting like on this video. Give me that thumbs up there. Um, break the YouTube algorithm. Um, subscribe to my channel as well if you haven't already. I thank you so much for watching and we're going to move on to card number two, love and light. Hello, card number two. Let's have a look and let's see what messages from the light are coming in here for you guys. We have, ooh, very nice. 
we have Master Hilarion and Archangel Raphael. Look how beautiful that card is. Archangel Raphael is opening those doors for you, is welcoming you into the light. Ascended Master Hilarion is very closely related to the Akashic Records. Part of your purpose as a light worker or part of the spiritual energy that is being highlighted for you at this time is the ability for you to learn and use the information that you have learned to heal not just yourself, but also help others on your life's journey. Hilarion says this is a time of profound learning and expansion of your mind for you. However, there may be this energy here where you're spending so much time learning and learning and learning and learning that you're not taking that time to step back and absorb the information that you are gaining in the wisdom. Because when we absorb the information, information and knowledge turns into wisdom. Okay, so that's where Archangel Raphael comes in to open your heart to bring you that beautiful calming energy so that you can take a step back and that you can understand and gain deeper wisdom and insights into the information that you have learned and that has come your way. For some of you here, the doors to the Akashic Records are open. The Akashic Records, if you're not aware of what they are, it's like the universal um, bank of information. Think of opening the door, opening a portal there to a library that is filled with books and information as far as the eye can see and even further beyond. Anything that you ever wanted to know about this lifetime and past lifetimes is in those Akashic records. We can also sometimes gain a glimpse into the future, keeping in mind, always with a caveat, that the future is perpetually in motion, that we have free will, and that every, every decision that we make can change the direction that we're on. We will quite often find that we end up in the, in the same place that we would have, because we've got destiny that's also at play, but it's all of the pathways and how we get to certain places, okay? But that future is always in motion. But if you are do thinking of doing any kind of past life regression, or if there's greater answers that you're looking for in from the universe, okay, those doors, those records are open for you now. But this is a time of great healing, inspiration, and knowledge that is here for you in the here and in the now. So call on Ascended Master Hilarion. Call on Archangel Raphael to open your mind, to open your heart, to help you let go of expectations and be ready to receive the messages, the inspiration, the knowledge, and the wisdom that is headed your way. The light is flowing to you and through you. You have also, for some of you, part of your purpose, part of your calling is to be, thank you, is to be that guiding light for other people, is to channel information and messages that other people may not necessarily be able to get on their own without somebody like you to help them. That's your soul's purpose. That's why you're here. We have soul star activation. Wow, beautiful. This is awesome. When we get this particular energy, it literally says on the card, remembering who you are. Again, that past life regression, that accessing the Akashic Records, some information, some knowledge is available to you now. But in order to receive it, what are we doing? Activating our soul star chakra. Our soul star, soul star chakra is not necessarily talked about a lot. We talk about our regular seven chakras, okay, right? We've got our root chakra, we've got our sacral, our solar plexus, our heart, our throat, our third eye, and our crown chakra, which is just a little bit above the top of our head. Above that, though, we have more chakras than that. It's just the main ones that get all, that's the ones that get all the attention, okay? But your soul star chakra 
is actually really powerful and it's above your crown chakra. So your soul star chakra is being activated right now. Our soul star chakra is where we connect with our past lives, with our soul, with our soul contracts. If your crown chakra is kind of like your computer where you receive the information, the soul star chakra is kind of like your, um, your internet connection, your Wi-Fi kind of thing, connecting you with all of the universe. But the Egyptian god Horus is featured on this particular card. When you sign a soul contract to come into this lifetime, your part of your soul contract was your ability to remember and to access all of the information and the wisdom from your past lives and also from your soul, all of your soul's past lives, but also from others' past lives as well. For some of you here, you may actually be practicing um, learning how to be like a healer, how to turn something, turn that energy into a practice. For some of you, part of your, your gifts here may be to help other people access their past lives. But at the very least, through guidance, meditation, and being open, okay, you have the ability here to activate your star, your soul star chakra and to connect with all of your past lives to figure out who am I? Where did I come from? What have I experienced in my past? What kind of contract did I sign in this lifetime? Very powerful, very profound energy. So part of how we can clear and activate our soul star chakra is to work with selenite. And your stole star is, think about it about, I would say it's about six inches or so above the top of your head. Okay. So if you do some work with some selenite, um, one of the ways that I work with my soul star is um, sometimes it's easier to kind of like lie down and, you know, I kind of like wave the selenite wand over the top of my head kind of thing. Um, but you can also lie down and put a piece of selenite just about this far above the top of your head. Um, and it can help to clear your energy and clear those pathways and it can really help. So you might find other ways to do that. There's guided meditations and things like that. Um, there's probably not as many of them as the rest of the, you know, of the ones that get all the glory. Okay. But it's very important chakra for you. Okay. So very wonderful energy. So let's see. Thank you very much. What else is coming out here for you guys? Just explosive energy. So let's see. That is a lot of cards. Am I taking? Okay. I'm taking them all apparently. All right. Fair enough. We have, it is not to control, release control and be in the flow. Simple. When we try and control everything, when we try and micromanage the universe, or we try and control where the messages are taking us, we create resistance and we create blocks. Okay. Release control, be in the flow. Okay. Because the Akashic records, especially if it's like your first time trying to access them, number one, keep a clear mind. Okay. Keep it, just be open and be free. Okay. Also don't give up because it is not necessarily easy to access the Akashic records and it's a different experience for everybody. A spiritual path is an individual path and it's a different experience for everybody. Some people, I see it because I love, you know, medieval things and ancient things and Egyptian things and all that. When I envision the Akashic library, to me, it is that massive library filled with all old leather bound books and papyrus and all that kind of wonderful things. Also a lot of crystals everywhere. For others of you, it might be a little bit more modern, right? For others of you, maybe it's something in nature. So it's all going to be a little bit different for every single one of you. So go in with no expectations and with an open mind. But also you might need to repeat the process numerous times because it's not a light switch. So don't get discouraged. If you try it four or five times and you still haven't accessed it, don't worry. On some level, you have accessed it. And as you just keep going and going, things get a little bit easier. Questions. If you are going to access your Akashic records, what are you going to ask? 
What information are you looking for? It is important to know what you want to know. Sometimes we just want to know general information. Sometimes we're like, oh, you know, can you show me one of my past lifetimes? But you got to kind of know something, okay? What am I, it's kind of like approaching a tarot reading, right? If I'm going to pull out my tarot deck today and I'm going to pull out um, some messages for myself today, I kind of got to know what I want to know. Sometimes I just keep it open and free and say, what does spirit want me to know today? Okay, but sometimes I have some specific questions that I want to ask. So um, it's all about your intention, all about your questions. So don't be, um, you know, so keep an open mind, but also kind of have a little bit of uh, things that you want to know. But I also do feel here that this is a time when some big questions are being answered for you as well. Okay, we have the body energy, the small of the back. Some of you may actually have um, some tingles up your spine a little bit. The small of your back um, can be the back side of your sacral chakra. Okay, can also be depending on where on the small of your back that you might get some um, pain or some tingles or something like that can also be a little bit with your um, uh, with your root chakra there as well. But there's something here about the small of your back that is very important for some of you. It's a very tender area and it's where our bottom part of our body connects with the top part of our body. So there may be some sort of connection there. Okay. There might also be some healing energy that is flowing into you from Archangel Raphael to that area of your body. Okay. So call on Archangel Raphael if you do have some sort of body aches and pains, okay, that you need some help with. We have the quiet within, through the quiet, through the stillness is where the answers flow, is where the information flows, okay? We need to quiet our conscious mind to connect with the energy and allow it to flow. When we embrace the quiet within, this is where we heal, this is where we release any kind of control or blocks or resistance, and this is where we connect Ooh, we have the Stargate Gateway opening up for you. Oh my goodness gracious me, yes indeed. You have opened a portal, you have opened the door. All of the information, the knowledge, the power, the energy of the universe is yours. You have opened this gateway, you've opened this Stargate to other worlds, to other lifetimes, to the past, to your ancestors, even your glimpse into the future. But remember, it's in those times of the quiet mind that those answers come towards you. This brings us together and makes us whole with the unified energy that's coming in here. This is a time where everything is coming into alignment for you. You're embracing all of the energy. You've got healing going on. Your chakras are aligned. And what does this do? It brings you in alignment with your true power with who you are, who you're meant to be, the power within. You're embracing it, it's growing, it's coming to light, it's coming to the surface. Trust and embrace the powers that you have. You might be experiencing some profound changes right now in your world. Who am I? Where am I? What am I meant to do? And the thing is, you've got courage to make change you also have the courage amongst change now this is interesting energy here because for some of you again part of your life purpose your journey is to use the information the knowledge and the wisdom that you have to help guide lead and heal other people the world is a chaotic place right now there's a lot of changes going on a lot of transformations going on a lot of uncertainty scary crap going on, right? You may be that guiding light for other people through this time of chaos and change that we are living in. And that is why you are being activated right now. So again, that guiding light for others. I also feel here that um, part of the light that's activating within you, okay, is, am I, no, thank you, is to have that courage to change, 
or to persevere through the changes that are happening around you because if you're you're going through some massive spiritual shifts here and sometimes that involves doing some shadow work and that's difficult right it's difficult to do um the hardest work you'll ever do and sometimes we don't just do it once <laughs> Okay, sometimes we got to do things over and over again, right? Um, you know, because it's a process, right? It's not a light switch. So this is activating within you the courage to change, to persevere through change, whether it's within your control or outside of your control, and to help others through periods of change and uncertainty. The Empress. You have a lot of love, a lot of empathy to give. The Empress card shows this is a period of expansion and growth and it's also activating and highlighting your divine feminine. This is a time of abundance, of healing, of joy, of pleasure. Be open and be ready to receive in that Empress energy. A new journey, oh, new journey forward, the Six of Swords. The Six of Swords, very interesting, considering we did just get that energy here of guiding and leading other people. The Six of Swords is a rite of passage. It's also a card of protection. And if you see in this card, we've got somebody who is guiding that boat and taking people to safety. So again, you might have that energy, that gift within you, within your soul. Part of your contract is to lead others out of difficulty into safety. The Six of Swords also shows that you've been going through whatever you've been going through, whatever you've experienced, whatever you've overcome. It's all part of your journey, all part of your life lessons, all part of what you're meant to experience. And there are better times ahead. There's calmer times ahead. And Spirit wants to remind you that sometimes in periods of adversity, we have to go through periods of challenge, of adversity. Because if we don't, if we don't feel what it's like in chaos, in change, in adversity, if we don't experience that, how can we embrace the joy and the pleasure and the wonderfulness that is around us too? We will, we won't know the difference. So I feel here that spirit is saying to you that you may have overcome a lot of challenges in this lifetime and past lifetimes, but it's all part of your journey. Because that helps you recognize the good. That helps you recognize what it's like to feel whole, to feel free, to feel good, to feel love, to feel joy. But without having those challenging experiences, you would never get that appreciation. You would never get that understanding. But Spirit's also reminding you here in the Six of Swords that you, my friend, are also always divinely guided and protected in every single thing that you do to move forward on your journey, to heal, to release the Eight of Cups, to let go. There's better times ahead for you. There's a lot of forward movement coming in here in your reading, the Six of Swords, peaceful times ahead, out of strife into calm, okay, resolving issues, finding compromise, leading others, okay, the Eight of Cups, an inner journey of your soul and you're being shown the way, you're being shown the light, you're headed in the right path, you're headed in the right direction. But there may be some things that you do need to let go of on your journey, right? In order to keep that open heart, in order to heal, in order to let go, and in order to maybe even show other people how to heal, to let go, and to embrace love and life and laughter on their journey. And the Four of Cups. There's something coming in here for you. The Four of Cups can sometimes bring in an energy here where we're missing something. We can't find something. We're looking for something. Your key to greater understanding and to finding what you've been searching for is the Empress. Being open being ready to receive, being in at calm, at peace, and at one with the universe and with yourself, your higher self. Because the Four of Cups <clears throat> can quite often be that energy where we're waiting for something. We start to fall into a little bit of despair. It's like, ugh, nothing's happening for me. Nothing's working for me. No. 
Spirit says here, the Empress is your key to finding what it is that you're looking for and even to showing other people their path forward. Now, it's interesting, though, in this energy as well, I'm being reminded, okay, the Four of Cups in this particular card, see this guy here? He's surrounded by books. There's a papyrus. There's a scroll on the bottom there. There's this old leather-bound book there. It's kind of open. It's on its side. It's like, ugh, this guy, he's got a book open, and he's just got his head in his hands. He's like, oh, man, I still can't find what I'm looking for. Akashic Records, people. Remember, it's a process. It's a journey. Every time you try, you get a little bit closer and a little bit closer. So don't give in to despair. Okay? There's information. There's answers. There's solutions. There's something that is coming into you. But a little bit of patience and an open mind and an open heart may be the key. Okay? To understanding that. Some great wisdom and insights are coming in for you here on some level. Quiet the mind, release expectations. You'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. You'll know where you're going. You'll know what the answers are. So don't despair in that Four of Cups, okay? Keep on opening those books. Keep on opening those doors. Let's see what else we've got for you. Oh, and we've got Thoth energy here, right? Interesting, considering we have books that are coming to light. This again, Thoth is the, um, it's interesting that we've got two Egyptian energies. We've got Horus and Thoth. Information, knowledge, contracts, wisdom. All of this is activated for you. Connect with the energies of Horus and Thoth, your soul, star chakra, book of knowledge, writing, information. Keep a dream journal on your journey. Keep a journal or have a piece of paper and a pen available for you if you do, if you do some meditations to um, like access your um, Akashic Records or anything like that, or just to be open and receive whatever messages and words of wisdom that come your way. Um, keep a piece of paper handy so that when you come out of your meditation or when you come out of those times of just being, then you have something to write down, right? Because sometimes we have like a little flash because our conscious mind wants to take back over, right? And so um, it's within the first couple of minutes, okay? Have a pen and paper available to write things down. But you are either, you can be accessing a lot of information right now, or maybe you're called to write something. Write a journal. Write down your dreams. Maybe even something like automatic writing. That would be interesting. But books and writing and information and knowledge and all of these things are being activated and opened up for you. So get ready to receive those words that you're looking for, the information that you're looking for. Quite exciting energy. Embrace the Empress. Get creative. Ooh, creative writing. That could actually be the key to some of your success. Write about your journey. Write about your adventures, even if no one sees it except you. It can be therapeutic to write things down sometimes. I'm going to leave that there for you guys. I hope there was something here that resonated with you on some level. If there was, please consider giving my video here a thumbs up by hitting the like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I thank you so very much for watching. And we're going to move on to card number three. And last but not least, we've got message number three coming out for you. Let's see what the third card, what the messages are in store for you. Ooh, we have the pink rose of Lady Nada. Wow, beautiful energy. This is a time of abundance and creation for you, a time of beauty and strength. All these things blossoming in your world, okay? Roses and flowers, right? They do represent that energy of just 
love and harmony and joy. This is a time of healing for you, of releasing all angers and fears and sadness and disappointments. Everything is being soothed. This is a period of peace, of calm, of love, of happiness, of joy, and oh, all of this magnificent, magnificent love and light blossoming in your world. You have the ability to harness all of this energy right now to restore peace and balance, but you also have the energy here and the ability to share with other people, to spread your beautiful light from the inside and allow it to shine outwardly, make someone else's day a little bit brighter and a little bit lighter. And just like the pink rose, a rose is beautiful, smells wonderful, it blossoms, but it also carries thorns. And so spirit wants you to know that sometimes out of pain, out of heartache, out of sadness, comes something beautiful. And one of the most interesting messages that I'm getting these days is a reminder to us all collectively that if we never felt hurt or sadness, heartache, pain, fear, then we would never be able to differentiate or appreciate the times of love and healing and calm and happiness and joy. It's like we have to experience difficulty to appreciate when everything is good. And while it seems like it may sometimes be a painful lesson, it's part of our journey through life. It's part of being human. So part of the message that Spirit wants to impart is that there may be pain and sadness and heartbreak and loss that has been in your world or that it is in your world right now. But there is also this beautiful white light headed your way. This love and this healing and this element of peace. This can also be part of your life purpose. Okay, part of your um, purpose as a light worker to use your past experiences to help others through their pain and their sadness to help others and to show them that there's a better way to show them that there's a light at the end of the tunnel that there's a lot of magic and wonder in the universe and sometimes we have to make a conscious effort to open up to see it because we can sometimes get lost when things are challenging right so you certainly do have all of this wonderful energy within you and you can share that with others. Let's see what else we've got for you. We have Gaia Gateway activation and Pleiadian activation here for you too. The Gaia Gateway is activated and open for you. This is um, <laughs> so interesting because it's what we were just talking about. Learning experiences, wisdom transmission, and gaining wisdom from your time here on Earth. So for some of you here, you are having one hell of an earthly experience. We are all spiritual beings having a human experience. And in your time here on earth in this lifetime and previous lifetimes, you've learned a lot. You've come a long way. You have overcome so many things. And now all of those experiences, all the pain, all of the difficulties and all of the joy and the blessings is changing and is transmit and transmuting into wisdom. And this wisdom allows you to see things differently, changes your perspective, but also helps you to lead and guide other people. So the Gaia Gateway is activating that connection and that wisdom that you have gained here on Earth. We have Pleiadian activation coming in here too, and this is very interesting because of course, yes, we are spiritual beings. The Pleiadian energy is bringing you in light coats, 
things coming together, an energy of harmony and peace. This is resolving issues, finding compromises. This is surrounding you with all of this wonderful bright light, white light, and the spiritual connection, the spiritual energy. Between the earth and the stars, you are finding your place in this world. I feel here for some of you, interesting because it's kind of a little bit of a parallel to card number two. I feel like some of you, when we've got the Pleiadian energy, sometimes we can find ourselves in um, periods where we feel as though we don't quite fit. We don't quite belong. It's like we never really feel like we're at home. And of course not, because you have memories, you have ancient wisdom, and you remember where you're from. You remember the star that you call home. And sometimes it's very difficult to find that place in the world today. But I feel here in this energy that there is something happening where you're going to figure out where those pieces fit or where you fit or even what your purpose is. You are a very spiritual being, very spiritual being. And I feel like you're being shown a path, you're being shown a way, and there's something coming to you. There's some information, some messages coming to you, bringing you peace and love and light. Curiosity of exploration. The Trinity. Very nice. The Trinity is the power of three. And we have the body, the left foot arch, moving forward, moving forward. Curiosity of exploration. I feel here that you're opening your mind, you're expanding your consciousness, you're looking at things in a different way than maybe you didn't previously. This is, you know, you're curious about things around you. You're... Again, it's like this shift in perception. It is card 20, um, so it can certainly relate back to the judgment card, right? Where we're leaving something behind because we know there's a better way forward, okay? Or we're being shown a different path, a different way. There's some sort of clarity that maybe you're seeking and you may find that clarity that you're looking for. They say sometimes that curiosity killed the cat, but if we're not curious about things and if we don't ask questions and if we don't explore our options, then we get stuck, right? Okay, there's nothing wrong with being a little bit curious. So I think there's something here that you are wanting to know, something that you're exploring internally or externally. And through that open mind energy and through that ability to ask questions or, you know, to kind of like unravel some threads, I think that's where you're gaining some insights and some wisdom. That's where you're activating this light codes. That's where you're activating these gateways, these portals. And you're about to step forward into some very interesting, very magical energy. The Trinity, beautiful Trinity of light. Number one, the power of three, the magic, the power, the magic of manifestation. The Trinity reminds us in the energy of the light that we are of the light, we are with the light, and we are within the light. And everything comes together as a symbiotic unit acting as one. Embrace the light within. Embrace the light that is around you. Because there's something activating here for you that's very powerful and very strong. And when we are together in this energy of perfection in the Trinity, it's when the magic happens. So there's certainly something here, the power of three, the Trinity, the, and the light that is around you and surrounding you. It's a very magical energy. And there's something coming to fruition here for you. So embrace that light, the loving light. You're about to step forward into a new something. When we have the body card, the left foot arch, quite often, sometimes when we are about to start something new, we kind of injure ourselves some way, usually our feet, stub our toe, twist our ankle. 
get a mosquito bite that we scratch until there's no tomorrow. When we get the left foot arch here, this shows that you're about to step forward into something new. You're moving past something, you've overcome something, and you are moving forward in a very wonderful, very profound way. We like the new. Let's see what else we've got for you guys. We've got the fool that fell out of the deck, stepping forward into something new. Look at you. We've got the star. You're being guided. You're being protected. Your path forward is being lit on your journey. There's a lot of blessings. There's a lot of healing. And there's a lot of guidance that is surrounding you. We have the seven of pentacles. There's a lot of abundance in your world. This is bringing you patience. This is bringing you the ability to enjoy your ride. Enjoy where you're at. The seven of wands. Double sevens there for you guys. Okay, so certainly some magic in the air for you. The page of swords, messages, and information that are headed your way. And the ace of swords, ultimate clarity, epiphany, a sense of purpose, and a sense of knowing. So the fool, again, you're stepping forward into something new, something wonderful, something magical. This could be something new shifting within you. This could be you making change in your world, trying new things, learning new things, expanding your mind. The fool likes to explore new things, right? Explore your options, explore your surroundings, get yourself out in the world, keep an open mind. A little bit of adventure, a little bit of fun. The fool card is where we take the first steps in our journey. We're preparing for um, one very interesting ride. Wherever you're headed, you're divinely guided and protected. There's a lot of blessings, a lot of wonderful energy that is headed your way. Wish fulfillment. What are you wishing for? What are your, Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? The star brings about some beautiful Aquarian energy of having an open mind, looking out into the future, looking out to the beyond, and really connecting with your intuition, with the universe, and harnessing that power and bringing it to earth. Just like we have the Pleiadian gateway and the Gaia gateway, the stars and the earth, and the Aquarian energy of the star also highlights our connection between the stars and the earth and maintaining a balance between the two and being able to connect with both at the same time. Trust your intuition and follow your guidance and follow your journey because there is a lot of blessings that are headed your way. The star restores faith and trust and hope, gives us divine inspiration on our journey through life. The fool brings in some exciting energy too. So you're certainly moving forward on your journey. The Seven of Pentacles shows that there's abundance blossoming in your life. There's success on the horizon for you, but your journey's not over. When we have the Seven of Pentacles, it's like, hmm, I have a goal in mind. I know where I want to get to. I want to get to the Ten. I'm at the Seven right now. Don't worry. There's more adventures. There's more journey ahead for you. Sometimes the Seven of Pentacles shows up to remind us that there are things in our life and there's, there's times in our life when... We need to take a step back and consider if we're still on the right track. This is where we look at circumstances in our world and say, okay, do I still feel as though I'm headed in the right direction? Or do I feel that I need to change direction? Trust your intuition and connect with your higher self in the star energy because the answers that you're looking for, not only are they within you, but they are also coming to you in this energy. The sevens do tend to bring about some spiritual guidance as well in our world. So follow the stars, follow your wishes, your goals, your dreams, be open to suggestion, be open to the guidance that is around you. And you will know where to go because you are strong. You are powerful. You are confident. You have the ability to overcome anything that life throws at you. The good, the bad, the challenges, whatever it is. The Seven of Wands shows you are very much in a position of strength. 
your powers are growing, you're expanding, you're gaining deeper insights and wisdom and understanding, right? Remember, there's healing coming in for some of you here as well. The Seven of Wands shows that there may be periods in your world where you do need to put up some sort of boundaries somewhere along the way, or you might need to stand up for yourself or even in this Aquarian energy of the star, stand up for others. Show others how to conquer their fears, their doubts, how to overcome their challenges, right? You might actually be part of that guiding light that other people look up to. You just have a lot of wisdom and guidance and wisdom in your soul that you can help guide other people. But you do have two sevens in your reading, so you might actually be opening the doors to a little bit of luck. Sevens are very spiritual. We're also kind of lucky. But we've got the Page of Swords here too, bringing in a little bit more of this open-minded energy, this curiosity energy. The Page of Swords very much likes that, like that curiosity of exploration. The Page of Swords is an open mind, is always on the quest for new ideas, to expand consciousness, to learn new things, to um, look at other, p other points of view, right? Very expansion, expansive kind of energy. So number one, the pages do bring messages. So there's some messages coming in for you. There's guidance. There's inspiration coming in for you. There's light codes coming in for you. But this is also really that very open mind. The willingness to change. The need to try new things. And to take things in a new direction. And through that open mind is where we do get those answers because we're in full-on receiving mode with the Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords brings clarity, brings epiphanies, brings that deep knowing about something. The answers are coming in. A new way of thinking is coming in. The aces do bring about a little bit of luck as well. So I think some of you, you do have some luck on your side, okay? Or you feel as though your luck is changing and that things are taking a turn for the better. You have the power to change and to embrace what the life has to bring for you. But the ace of swords is the sword of fate, the sword of destiny. The Ace of Swords, that sword, we can use to detach from anything that's been holding us back or any kind of resistance so that we can move forward lighter and brighter. The Ace of Swords does bring in this energy of, yes, I did it, a victory of success, new ideas, new inspiration, new ways of thinking, that burst of clarity, clear communication on all levels, all right, very much with your crown chakra messages received. So I think here, I think some of you are really gaining clarity and insight on what your, what your destiny is. What is your journey? What are you meant to do? Others of here, you here, you might just have some very interesting questions about the universe, about spirit, about maybe the Pleiades. Where did I come from? What does that mean? Right? The page of swords is questions everything. And why? Why does this do this? Well, what happens if I do this? Very big picture kind of way of thinking. So keep asking those questions. Why? Okay, be curious about the world around you. Because the more information we get, the more interesting things sometimes get. But whatever is going on for you, there's something very profound that is happening, that is shifting, that is changing, or that you're coming into a realization for in your world. And this is bringing you in some very beautiful energy. Let's see. One more message, please, for people watching. One more message, please, for card number three. Whoa, that's lots of messages. Okay, thank you very much. There we go. No, we got the same cards out. Okay, fine. When the same cards come out two times in a row, they are meant to be read. We have the green man. The green man, nature. Connect with nature. Mother Gaia, that Gaia and gateway. Trees, nature. Meditate in nature. Connect with nature. Ground your energy. Okay, hug a tree. 
Okay, some sort of retreat into nature may be good for your heart, for your soul. We also have listen. Listen and allow the information to flow. In those times of quiet, in those times when we just let our mind go, is when we do get those answers. The act of actually listening can bring us understanding. It's not like, oh, yeah, 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 I hear you. No, 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 I am listening. When you are in listening mode, you are in receiving mode. You're open to the answers, the wisdom, the guidance that is coming to you. We have energy healing here for you too. Now this is Merlin energy. So for some of you, you have the power to heal. The power to heal not just yourself, but also to others around you. Some of you may gravitate towards perhaps you're learning things about how to be a, um, for per, perhaps a Reiki practitioner, or perhaps you have the ability to clear your own chakras. Heal your own energy, allow the energy to flow, but also to help other people for some of you on your um, on their pathway to whatever it is here for you there is a lot of magic and a lot of power that flows to you a lot of alchemy spiritual energy okay your ability here to turn energy into something real something tangible in your world the power of merlin is yours to be had and we have the spiritual law of attraction coming right in there with merlin excellent you are attracting all things to you that match your energetic vibration. We always do, but the power is activated for you in a much more powerful way right about now. So be mindful of your thoughts and your feelings because, of course, we have the ability here to attract all kinds of things into your world, both the good and the bad, and we only really want to attract in the good, right? So just be a little bit aware of that. But you are attracting people, situations, answers, knowledge, into you okay you are like you know that that little childhood saying i'm rubber you're glue okay you are glue things are vibrating and things are manifesting into your world and they are sticking to you like glue okay so we only want to have things come in sticking to us attracting to us that are things that we want okay so um the spiritual law of attraction it is yours the power is yours Harness it. Embrace it. This is such a magical energy. Set some intentions. Manifest some things in. Clear your chakras, okay? And embrace all of this wonderful energy that is you. I'm going to leave that there for you guys. I hope there was something here that resonated with you on some level. If there was, please consider hitting like on this video by hitting that thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I thank you so very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Love and light. Bye.